God, would you rend the heavens and fill us with your power and your presence and your spirit? Get us out of mediocrity. Get us out of dry, dead formalism. I want the power of God on my life or I don't want anything to do with religion. And sometimes I get fired up because I'm in Genesis and I think we should take back the rainbow because that is a sign of God. And he says, yes, I will go to him. That is my sign. That is my sign of judgment. That is my sign to the people. That's hatred. No, that's love. That's a love for God's word. Zeal for his house has consumed me. And when I see his word mocked and I see it ridiculed and perversion and blasphemy, you gotta sound the alarm and get a little fired up. This nation is not going to turn back from the brink of destruction with just the everyday Christian just sitting around doing little quick prayers on their way to work. There's going to be travailing and anguish and pulling down heaven and going into spiritual battle. We are calling heaven on our side. Raise up a banner. Raise up a standard. Raise up by identity. Show the people who you are. Time is running out. The world is getting evil. But he says, wait on me. And just God, oh God, would you rend the heavens? The fire of God, the unction of God. Go out and do things in the power of the Holy Spirit. Jesus said, do these things, and in my name you will do this list of things in the power of God. Oh, once you grasp hold of even the hem of his garment, you don't want to let go because the power and presence of God is so strong on your life. You don't care about your stock, whatever it is. God, just enter me and, and change me and consume me. The fear of God is the beginning of wisdom. The fear of God is the beginning of understanding. Is the fear of God in this place? When you walk in and you feel the holy presence of God, the sometimes will bring you to your knees there's a respect and say I can't come into the house of the living God the same as when I came in I've got to deal with my sin I've got to repent of my pride I've got to fully surrender my life the weight of his glory is pressing me down and I need to leave here justified because Christ has set me free there is only one place of safety and hope in these desperate times that place is in the ark of Jesus Christ you come back into that ark and you say Lord it's all wrath on the outside but I have the hope on the inside isn't that true all hell is breaking loose. There's sex trafficking right down the street in Palmdale and Lancaster and all hell pornography right over the hill in Santa Clarita and all kinds of abuse and murder is happening all on the outside. But you come into the ark of safety of God's church and you begin to worship him and cry out to God and Lord we need the ark of your covenant. Do you truly have this relationship where you can say my heart cries Abba Father not get away from me Father. I've been broken. I've been humbled. I, I, I confess Christ as Lord and Savior. And if you have not this is the time to do it. That's what really stinks about being a prodigal is you know God and you desire God but you're eating with the pigs and God says come back to me and again experience like David. Oh that the joy of my salvation would return to me because my heart is right. So prodigal sons, wayward daughters come home tonight fully confess Christ as Lord and Savior. He doesn't just save you and then leave you. He cleans you up and he becomes the Lord of your life. God, would you rend the heavens? That word means rip open the heavens and come down and fill your people with your peace and with your presence. We've got to do business with God if we're going to see him rend the heaven. And the problem is not that we didn't vote right. The problem isn't that we aren't aware of what needs to be done. The problem is we aren't seeing the power of God. We aren't seeing the heavens rent. We aren't seeing God among us. We aren't seeing God do what only he can do because I think there's apathy. We hate other people's sin, but we don't hate our own sin. God's voice has been really quiet in your life. You, you feel that distance, you're cold, you're callous, you have no burden for souls, you have no desire to get in the word, you have no prayer life, and you know who you are tonight, where you need to put that aside, you need to come to him, and you need to get back to where you were, that first love. Could you imagine when God Almighty decides to come down again and shake the very foundation on which we're living? And when God says earth quake and says mountain move, those things can happen. It's a powerful God we serve.